Welcome back. When Halo Infinite finally debuted last Sunday, Halo fans were elated and immediately started ripping apart the new trailer. One detail that stood out among the lore community more so I think than anything else was the apparent setting, Installation 07. Now if you'd like to hear all the evidence, I recommend my trailer breakdown from last Monday. Link in the description and at the top right. For now, however, let's assume that Installation 07 is the ring in the trailer and dive into its unique history and what it could mean for Halo Infinite's story. As noted, Installation 07 as it's now known is special among the rings of the final array. Zeta Halo was originally part of the first Halo array, a array of 12 rings 30,000 kilometers in diameter, three times the size of the rings we visited in the games. These rings were built not long after the Human Forerunner War, a conflict during which the ancient spacefaring human empire invaded Forerunner space, glassing and colonizing their planets seemingly with no reason. When humanity was finally defeated, it was discovered that they had been running from a parasite known as the Shaping Sickness, or the Flood. Many of what remained of these humans were devolved into primitive forms as punishment, but a few were composed, their minds imprinted in the DNA of the devolved humans to be passed on for generations. This meant Forerunners could recover these memories, these essences, for information should the Flood return. In the meantime, other plans and contingencies were explored. Among these was the Halo Array. The first of these arrays, created from a forge known as the Greater Ark, contained 12 rings. Though other ideas were proposed, notably Shield Worlds, Halos ultimately won out. Not much is known of these rings between their creation and the firing of the array. They would, however, be placed under the control of the first Contender Class Ancilla, or AI, Mendicant Bias, with one of his primary extensions placed on what would become Installation 07. This installation, like others, housed numerous species, notably descendants of the humans devolved millennia ago. Under the orders of the Master Builder, or Faber, the mind behind the Halos, experiments were run on these humans, discovering what seemed to be an immunity from the Flood. In truth, the Flood chose not to infect these humans as part of a larger plan against the Forerunners. In light of the apparent immunity, Faber had new human subjects collected from Earth, violating the wishes of the Ecumen Council and, more specifically, the Librarian. He hoped to extract some of the stored essences of ancient humans from those newly collected, the humans already on the ring lacking these. In time, the Flood research facilities where humans would be taken came to be known as the Palace of Pain, the primitive humans thinking that what were in truth several facilities was a single location. Humans would be brought to this palace not by force, but by control. Following their de-evolution, humans would be implanted with, along with the memories of ancient humans, a geish. Geisha, or gene songs, were intended to eventually elevate humanity to inherit the mantle of responsibility, a guardianship of the galaxy held by forerunners and before them, the enigmatic precursors. Using lifeworker beacons strewn across the ring, ovoid-shaped devices that allowed whoever controlled them to implant seemingly instinctive instructions into the geisha of the humans present, these humans were brought to the Palace of Pain. Decades before the end of the Forerunner Flood War, Installation 07 was tested near Charm Hakor, a world ripe with precursor artifacts and once the capital of the ancient human empire. Fired at a low power to limit the pulse's range, the halo effect destroyed the precursor artifacts, which had been held together by neural physics. Now, neural physics is pretty hard to explain, as it's meant to be a concept that transcends common understanding. It's known to have a close connection to the mantle as the precursors saw it, to living time a concept core to the mantle, and postulated that the universe itself was alive, though not in the sense that we might understand it. Suffice it to say, neural physics' relationship to life itself made anything constructed via its principles susceptible to the life-destroying effects of Halo. When tested at Charamacore, precursor artifacts in life with even the most rudimentary notochord were destroyed by Halo. This also freed a being that had been discovered at the outskirts of the galaxy and moved to Charamacore during the Human Forerunner War, one known by many names. The Captive, the Timeless One, the Primordial. The Primordial was brought to Installation 07 for study, after which the Master Builder departed, leaving his researchers in charge. As soon as he left, however, the Primordial awakened and began to converse with the Ring's primary Ancilla, Mendicant Bias. If you recall the Halo 3 terminals, there's a tale in them that tells of Mendicant Bias conversing with the Forerunner Gravemind for 43 years. This is that same tale. The Primordial was said to be the last precursor, but it was in fact more than just that. It was a grave mind, the central intelligence of the Flood. It talked with Mendicant and turned the contender against his creators. 
With Mendick in turn, the flood spread across the installation and experimentation continued. After those 43 years, Mendick and Bias and the Primordial began their siege on the Forerunners starting at the capital of Maithrilian. The other 11 original Halo rings had been gathered at the capital to discuss the future of the Halo plan. Mendicant took advantage of this and brought his halo, taking control of four others and hoping to wipe out Forerunner Command. In the ensuing fight, most of these halos would be destroyed and several Forerunners killed. The two rings to survive were Omega Halo, which escaped to the Greater Arc, and the future Installation 07, Mendicant Bias's halo. Eventually, the ring was recaptured by the Isodidact, though in a heavily damaged state. To save it, damaged sections were shed and the ring's size reduced to 10,000 kilometers, after which it was brought to the Greater Arc for repairs. The mass of flood victims, including 10 dormant proto-grave mines, were left on the ring, watched over by the installation's remaining monitors. Shrouded in perpetual cloud, the ring was then networked into the final array, taking on the designation of Installation 07, and sent to its final location to await activation. Eventually, the ring would be found by Dr. Luther Mann on November 28, 2553, and a full research detachment of approximately 300 scientists with specialties across numerous fields were sent in 2555 as part of the Zeta Halo project. By the time the ring was discovered, the flood presence was all but gone, at least as far as Hunters in the Dark implies, the perpetual cloud cover described in Halo Primordium and shown in Halo 3 was gone, and the presence of multiple monitors was nowhere to be seen. That covers the complete history of the installation, but let's talk about some of the specifics that could come up in Halo Infinite, starting with those three points I just discussed. The Flood, the Clouds, and the Monitors. First, the Flood. The Flood that were once there were gone by 2555 as far as Hunters in the Dark is concerned. The reason I brought this up is that a lot of people in the lore community have wondered about the Flood presence there since its mention in Primordium. For reasons I, to this day, don't entirely understand, there was some notion that the Flood could somehow survive the activation of the Array. Needless to say, they don't, nor would they have. Just in case it's a question in anyone's mind, being on a Halo Ring does not protect you from the Halo effect. Do creatures survive on the Halo Ring when the Halo Ring fires? Generally, no, they don't. Um, they'd have to be reintroduced. Some of that is actually talked about in basically the Refugia uh, discussions in Halo Wars 2. Yep. A lot of those, the like the plants and animals that would that would be killed by a halo array, uh, they could be reconstructed using uh, genetic samples that are located on the ring itself. They basically clone new yeah. critters. Um, but yeah, pr pretty much anything that would be affected by a halo array is not shielded by being on a halo ring. Which monitor? Though there could potentially be areas of the ring that are safe. Who knows? Still, despite the major flood presence that was once there being gone, study samples inevitably exist and who knows what sort of scars the flood could have left on the ring. Next, the clouds. This is less Halo Infinite connections and just something I want to address. When Installation 07 first appeared as a hologram in Halo 3, it had a very Venus-like surface, or in other words, covered in clouds. The other rings also appeared, each with their own very unique environments, some of which weren't entirely consistent with depictions that came later on. It was noted in a cannon fodder that the rings seen in Halo 3 were largely out of date, due largely to custodial negligence. And in relation to both topics, there's some discussion of a post from Catalog back in 2014 that stated that the Swords of Sung Helios had glassed the ring to remove potential flood-infected zones as of 2558. I actually talked about this in one of my old Catalog videos from back then. Even back then, what Catalog was describing sounded a lot more like what happened to Installation 05 in 2552. Whether Catalog did get Installations 05 and 07 mixed up, or the statement was just decanonized when Hunters in the Dark was commissioned, I can't say, but I lean towards the former. Finally, the Monitors. As described in Halo Primordium, the Flood Presence was watched over by monitors that had remained after the previous conflict. So, this is the first mention of a Halo having multiple monitors. Given the sheer size of the original rings, it makes a kind of sense to have more than one, but there's no indication that this was actually the case for the other rings. Given the strange experiments undertaken on Installation 07, the extra monitors could have been more the exception rather than the rule. But second, this makes me wonder about the command hierarchy on Installation 07. Despite the presence of multiple monitors, we know that there's one master monitor, if you will one monitor of Installation 07 like Spark was of Installation 04. The name remains unknown, but the monitor's number is 117649. So, if there is a primary monitor, what roles do the other monitors play in relation to 117649? And as no monitors were encountered by the UNSC in 2555, 
they stick around once the flood had been dealt with, or did they leave after the array fired to take on other duties? Or maybe they just wandered off? Interestingly, in Hunters in the Dark, it was theorized that 117649 had purposely hidden itself because it knew of what happened on other Halo rings, which would be an interesting angle to explore further in a game, if not a future novel. But, if 117649 does appear in Halo Infinite, which I'd love to happen, I hope 343 can address the fate of those other monitors in some fashion and his own absence up to that point. Maybe in a terminal, maybe in some random dialogue, or maybe in a codex entry? Eh? Eh? Continuing on, what about other connections? The Palace of Pain or the Flood Research Facilities would be an interesting place to potentially visit, especially if this game dives into the ancient human lore. Halo 4 started us on that route, so it's certainly not impossible. And as I discussed in my trailer breakdown, there's literal writing on the wall that makes me think that ancient humanity could be brought up again. Another extremely interesting place to visit would be the Cartographer. The original primary cartographer for Installation 07 was huge. As described in Halo Primordium, it was 500 kilometers wide and 400 kilometers long, which would make it longer than the width of the average Halo ring, which stretches 318 kilometers, at least on the rings we've been to. Again, Installation 07 was part of the original array, so it could be bigger in some areas still. Unlike the cartographer of Installation 04, which was located on a random island, Installation 07 was built into the walls of the ring. If that remains the case after the installation's shrinking and repairs, it could certainly change up the locale we could potentially expect. Just imagine finding this cartographer and then being able to look over the edge of a halo ring. I just think that would be so damn cool. What I also found extremely interesting while doing research for this video was that the cartographer contains a complete record of the installation's history. While I'm sure this is true of any other Halo's cartographer, this would be a great potential way to introduce some deeper lore to players and make a fantastic in-game source. If this is the case, 343, just make sure we can revisit it easily. Another interesting place to visit would be the control room. In Halo Hunters in the Dark, this was a location that main character Luther Mann was interested in finding and it might be a fun callback to Halo CE. Further, it could serve as a good primary goal as it would allow the UNSC to potentially do a lot with the installation, including potential easier access to the Ark, and maybe finding the location of other Forerunner constructs, such as the homeworld of Maithrillian. And on both of these subjects, let's again talk about the beam emitters from the Halo Infinite trailer. For now, these are our only indication of what Forerunner architecture could look like in the final game. To me, these look like something of a mix between the 343 and Bungie approaches to Forerunner architecture, though I personally feel it's a lot more 343. Regardless, I think people can agree it's a mix, which to me, makes perfect sense. The Bungie era designs are generally seen on Forerunner constructs built towards the end of Forerunner society. The rings of the final array in the Lesser Arc were created sometime in the final millennia of the Forerunners and have much simpler and rougher appearances. 343's designs, on the other hand, are much cleaner, smoother, more complex in design, and found on locations from the height of Forerunner society. 343's designs appear like they're from a time when Forerunners could be more ornate in their construction, such as we see on Requiem and Genesis. Bungies would be from a time when they couldn't afford to be as ornate and had to be a bit more straightforward and practical, or as practical as Forerunners can seemingly be. Installation 07 being a mix of these in some manner fits perfectly with the era it was built in. Though we don't know exactly when, we do know that they were built sometime before the final millennia of Forerunner society. If we compare the beam emitters from Valhalla and its remake Ragnarok, I think you can see what I'm getting at. A comparison to the beam emitter from Halo 5's Raid on Apex 7 is even clearer, I think. Incidentally, I'd argue, and I know others have, that the original Halo Wars 2 kind of has a mix of styles. More accurately, it definitely looks like it took inspiration from Bungie's Forerunner designs, but, like 343, a bit more ornate. A bit more, like we see going on in Halo Infinite. A little. The Shield Worlds were built around the same time as the original Halo array was being constructed, so it would make sense. But you tell me what you think. At the end of the day, I think between what we see in Halo 4 and 5, what we saw in the Bungie trilogy, and what we see in Halo Infinite paints a nice picture of the fall of Forerunner society. The last thing I want to discuss here is Mendicant Bias. Now, as I've said in my breakdown, I doubt we'll encounter him directly. He was last seen on the Ark, and getting him to Installation 07 would be a bit of a leap in logic, to say the least. However, once again, as I was reviewing Halo Primordium for this video, I discovered something very interesting. 
Mendicant's AI core, the housing for his primary extension, is still present on the ring. So, while I doubt we'll see Mendicant directly, this core could be a really cool easter egg to hunt for, or perhaps like the cartographer, a source of deeper lore and information. Maybe we could find records of Mendicant's work with the Primordial, more records of his talks with it, and maybe a look at Mendicant's origins. We know he was created as part of a combined effort by the Master Builder and the Didact, but there's a lot more to it. In both Halo Cryptum and Halo Primordium, there's a mention of Mendicant Bias's chosen name, his true name. We know human AI choose their names upon activation, so maybe that's true of Forerunner AI. Both Chakas and the former Forerunner Counselor, Splendid Dust of Ancient Suns, were given new names when they were composed and became Monitors, 343 Guilty Spark and 000 Tragic Solitude, respectively. It's not too much of a stretch to think the same was true of Mendicant Bias. But beyond just a name, there's a very interesting implication regarding Mendicant's origins. In a post on NeoGAF back in March of 2015, Frank O'Connor noted, Mendicant Bias wasn't built with human technology, although he may not have been exactly alien either. This would seem to imply that Mendicant was created in a manner similar to human smart AIs, but moreover, that Mendicant may have once been human. This is a bit much to dive into in this video, and I'd love to cover it in the near future, but suffice it to say for now, I'd love if Halo Infinite could dive into Mendicant's origins, even if the Ancilla isn't directly present in the game. And I think that's it for now, but there's plenty potential more we could dive into at some point. Installation 07 is a vast wonderland of potential easter eggs and deep lore connections, and I hope 343 is able to take full advantage of that in Halo Infinite. So, what do you all think of the history and potential of this installation? What would you like to see that was mentioned in this video? Or what would you like to see in general? I haven't mentioned it yet, but I'd honestly love to see some new, or perhaps old, types of Sentinels. Maybe that Safeguard Sentinel that was mentioned in the description for Halo 5 Sentinel Beam. In the trailer, we definitely see what looks to be a Sentinel underwater. Some people have thought it might be a Retriever, but that's way too small for something like that. Despite what Halo Wars 2 might make you think, these things are almost the size of human frigates. Enforcers have been another popular candidate, but it doesn't look like that to me. I'd like to think it's a new type, but we'll hopefully see. And yes, there are other Sentinels in the trailer, but I think they're just standard aggressors. Anyway, I'm getting too far into things again, so let's end it here. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canonites.